Hunter Biden has been indicted. A lot of people have some reaction to this, including Joe, who was just walking across the White House lawn, not saying much. But Hunter also showed up on a podcast and he's responding to the indictment, saying things like the Republicans are just trying to take me out because he knows how bad it's going to hurt my daddy. We also have reaction from the IRS whistleblowers who did a lot of incredible work in exposing this and making this rigged plea deal that Hunter Biden was about to take become derailed. But we're going to start with the Oversight Committee because we know James Comer and Jim Jordan and others have been digging into this for some time. And they posted this. They said, breaking Hunter Biden has been indicted in California. This would not have been possible without two brave IRS whistleblowers called Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler blowing the whistle. Said Americans should applaud these men for their courage to expose the truth. And we do. We're very grateful that they came out. We're grateful to Gary Ziegler, the team at Marco Polo USA.org for also digging into this and keeping the spotlight shine. But here's what the oversight said on their website. They say, here's the statement. They say, all right, two brave IRS whistleblowers have come forward. They placed their careers on the line and the Biden people are trying to take these guys out. Says the DOJ got caught in its attempt to give Hunter an unprecedented sweetheart plea deal. And the charges against Hunter are the result of Ziegler and Shapley's efforts. Every American should applaud these men. Said that the whistleblowers revealed investigators were prevented from following evidence that could have led to Joe Biden. Explaining how Biden's influence peddling schemes show how Joe himself knew about these things, participated in, benefited from them, all cashing in on the Biden name. In fact, Hunter's corporate entities implicated by today's indictments show that they funneled foreign cash that all landed into Joe Biden's bank account and said, unless Weiss investigates everyone involved in this fraud scheme, it's going to be clear that Biden's DOJ is protecting Hunter Biden and the big guy. So are there going to be more charges coming or is this kind of the end of the line here? That's what Oversight said. Now, speaking of the IRS whistleblowers, these gentlemen really put the brakes on all of this. And here's what they said. This is over from Empower Oversight. They say, statement from the IRS supervisory special agent, Gary Shapley and special agent Joseph Ziegler says, eight months ago, we did something ordinary people don't do. We risked our careers and reputations to bring the truth out of the shadows and into the light. We were moved solely by our consciences, yet face continual attacks. Nevertheless, in the face of all odds, we never wavered from what we shared with Congress. Today's indictment is a complete vindication of our thorough investigation and underscores the wide agreement by investigators and prosecutors that the evidence supported charges against Hunter. Yet, as we have stated, this is much bigger than our investigation or any one individual. It's about equal treatment of taxpayers under the law. And that's from Empower Oversight. You can give them a follow at this account, Empower underscore US. So that is what we saw over from the whistleblowers. Biden didn't really want to answer the question. He got asked about this when he was walking across the White House lawn. You see, this came over from Town Hall and RNC. They tell us that Biden dodges the question on Hunter's new charges. Here's what that sounds like. Not much from him. He was even struggling on that last step there, man. All right, so would have liked to see another frame or two on that one. All right, so John Solomon was the other clip that we did not play. So let me see if I can cue that one back up here. Sweetheart deal that the prosecutors were going to give Hunter Biden would have gone through were it not for these brave whistleblowers stepping forward and illuminating us. It's amazing how much. All right, so they are out. Let's see if there's anything from Comer and Oversight, if they had anything to say about this recent breakdown. This is James Comer reacting on CNN says, we have some concerns about this. Maybe they indicted him to protect him, right? Maybe this whole thing's a cover up. Maybe that this is just trying to save Joe Biden and throw Hunty to the wolves. Here's Comer. Protect him. Income. So we think that this is just the tip of the iceberg. We think there are many more crimes. And my concern is that Weiss may have indicted Hunter Biden to protect him from ah, having to be deposed. Yes. In the House Oversight Committee yes. on Wednesday. He but indicted we him to protect him. Yes. The classic rubric. He indicted him to protect protect him. I got it. Okay, so Jake is being very mocky right there. But yeah, he got indicted so he doesn't have to go testify to the oversight committee. Why is that strange? Indicted him with pretty minor crimes, right? They were going to give him no plea deal, no charges at all, just kind of dismiss the whole thing. Then diversion, which would have ultimately been dismissed. Now because he's throwing a fit, they had to do something else. Now they're charging him with a little bit more. So maybe it does make sense that they're doing it so that he doesn't have to testify. Look, this whole, this Jake, this whole thing's been about a cover-up. You know, you've got two. That's why he 
guy did him turn. to protect him, to cover it up. Well, he, look, you indict him on the least little thing, the gun charge and not paying taxes. He's facing like 17 I mean, additional years in prison. Yeah, but Jake, the justice system's a joke. Don't you understand? Yeah, but look these what he's felonies. done. Anybody else? Anybody else? Yeah, nobody cares. Okay, Jake, these guys, they love the numbers, right? It's all number, 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 number. Oh my gosh, it's like Trump, 91 charges for Trump, oh, 91. It's like, okay, but the justice system is illegitimate, right? Nobody really believes it. So yeah, maybe, Jake. Now here's Hunter, who is taking this stand. He says that, you know, Hunter Biden on the corruption allegations, he says, this may not, wild clip, in every respect, be a Russian disinformation campaign, but it literally has every earmark of what the Russians did. All right, here's Hunter, the smartest man Joe knows. Which, by the way, this whole idea that this may not, in every aspect, be a Russian disinformation campaign, but it has literally every earmark. <laughs> of what the Russians did. Yeah. There's, what's it yeah. called? It's called yeah. eliminationist rhetoric. Eliminationist rhetoric was something that the Nazis came up with as a tool to undermine their political rivals. And then Putin has fine-tuned it. And what Putin did when he was Putin. coming to power in the early 2000s was there were still some real significant voices and some with real money, intellectual, public standing inside of Russia or living as expatriates that were speaking out against Putin. So what did he do? He didn't argue with them on the merits. He didn't argue with them about economic policy and democracy and the freedom to vote because he knew he'd lose that argument. So what did he do? He labeled them pedophiles. He planted oh. child pornography on their laptops and their computers. And so maybe he probably indicted his political opponents too, right? Only 10% of the people then in the public would. So when you find, you see what Hunter's doing? So when you find that type of content on his laptop, when you get word that this thing is much worse than even anybody can even admit, okay? Okay, at the moment, that's because of Trump. Trump is taking a play out of the Russian book and Hunter's illegal content that the FBI had in their possession for a long time and did nothing about. It's propaganda, isn't it? Believe this shit. But then when he would turn around after he got 10, 15, 20% of the people believe in the worst thing you can possibly think about a human being, then when he turns around and said, and also he's a money launderer and he is against the Russian people, it's a lot easier for them to believe that. Well, there's evidence that he's a money launderer and there are a lot of of images with him with a lot of women and some of them, you know, who knows what age they are or what country he's in or what the heck he's doing. So you can see it's almost like a pre buttle right? Rather than saying after the fact, hey, Hunter's a pedo, you can just go around and say, he can deflate that at the outset. Just say, no, it's nothing. It's all Putin misinformation type of stuff. And so that came in over from the Hunter exchange. And let's see, I've got one more on this one saying they're trying to destroy a presidency. This is also Hunter. What they're they're trying to do is kill me, says Hunter. Do it. The way that I recognizing your resentments and trying to let them go. That's the way that I do it. The way that I do it is number one, I recognize that none of this is necessarily about me. They are trying to, in their most illegitimate way, but rational way, they're trying to destroy a presidency. And so it's not about me. In their most base way, what they're trying to do is they're trying to kill me, knowing that it will be a pain greater than than my father what? could be able to handle. And so therefore destroying a presidency in that way. And so I they're trying to kill Hunter by indicting him for like one tenth of the charges that are in here. Okay, the indictment was 56 pages. Garrett told us that this book over 600 pages. Okay, there's all sorts of other additional crimes like FARA violations that might be pertinent, but they're trying to kill Hunter with another sweetheart charging document. I realized that, that it's not about me. And then the second thing that I realized is that these people are just sad, very, very sick people that have most likely just faced traumas in their lives mm. that they've decided that they are going to turn into an evil that decide that they're going to inflict on, on the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's pretty amazing. So you can see he's trying to talk some fake sobriety stuff there, and it really irritates me as somebody who has a men's group that I attend every week when he's talking about, well, I just live with my resentments, you know, and I just deal with my resentments. And, you know, part of the program is making amends for your misconduct, okay, for the things that you have done, you got to clean up your side of the street. And he's not doing that. He's hiring lawyers who are just helping him deny any responsibility at all and blame everybody else, right? Blame and condemn everybody else other than him. And so that is Hunter Biden and his reaction. We also see the White House not going to have much to say about it. Joe Biden avoiding the question. The whistleblowers responded. The case is going to land in front of this guy, Judge Mark Scarcy, who is the Trump appointed judge. A little bit about him. You see, it tells us that he was born in Syracuse, New York. He's got computer science background, designed and developed a
defense applications, then got his JD. Sounds like a sharp dude. Worked at a number of different firms. And then in 2018, President Trump nominated him to serve as the district judge in California. He was confirmed by the Senate and ultimately took office, took the bench, announced that he would be nominated. And we learn that he is going to be presiding over Hunter Biden's tax charges in California. And so be very curious to see how that goes. We'll continue to follow it. He's been indicted again. He messed around with the DOJ. They don't like when you do that. And so we will be here continuing to cover this case and more. Thank you for subscribing wherever it is you're watching this. Thank you for hitting that like button. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.